Good evening, exiles. So after Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner, you always have your leftover uh, turkey. And also, if you cook a whole chicken, you always have the leftover chicken bits. So if you, if you want to know what to do with that instead of wasting it, uh, that's what this pot, or this, what's in this cooker, is us making uh, stock out of it. So the first thing you do is you, you cook your turkey, your chicken, whatever. You're, then you use that for the meat, that meal. You slice off everything you can get out off of it and put that in the refrigerator for lunch the next day. Then you take all your vegetables, uh, like this is full of potatoes, onions, celery, uh, carrots, that was put in the bottom of the pan. Then we put the turkey on top of it, cooked the turkey, brought this home from my parents' house, filled it completely full of water after getting all the turkey off, meat off of it we could, and let this set overnight on the lowest setting. You can also do this in a big pot and watch it. Or do it in an Instapot or one of these Nesco electric canners or something like that. Let me move the camera around and I'll show you what we do next. So the next thing is grab a measuring cup of some sort, a pot or a bowl, and then one of these mesh screeners work really well. Uh, I try to get one that fits over the pot like this. And then you just ladle everything in there. You will make a bit, bit of a mess on the table here, but that's life. And what this does is it lets us get every... Well, it takes our Thanksgiving turkey that we all ate and had a great Thanksgiving dinner with. Gives us some leftovers to eat the next day. And then gives us enough turkey broth that we don't have to use... Buy or... Buy any chicken broth again for the next year. So we'll use this turkey broth throughout the year and any recipes that call for chicken broth. And in the process with that, if we cook a whole chicken, we'll end up making more chicken broth that we can use in those recipes too. And then once our pot's full here, set this off to the side. Oh, Take it, throw all the stuff away. We don't need those anymore. Uh, you can compost them, but we don't have that system set up yet. And then take and put them in the mason jar. And you want to leave an inch of headspace. And double check to verify this, but 25 minutes for quart jars and 20 minutes for pint jars in the pressure cooker and you're good to go. You can also freeze this stuff in ice trays too and that gives you uh, ice cubes of broth to use anytime you need it, just a little bit of broth. And then what we're going to do when we're done is I threw that meat away, or threw those vegetables away, but what we're going to do when we're done is pick through all the leftover bits of meat and make some cat treats. I'll show you that once I get all these jars done. Alright, let's get the first batch started while I uh, finish canning. Or finish jarring up the rest. So we have the water to where it's just down to like where the neck of the jars start. And because the broth is being put in here hot, make sure to use hot water. Close this up. Set it. Clear it. Set for pressure cook. Go 25 minutes. And press start. So, and the fastest way to do it is to leave it on exhaust. But I usually flip it to airtight and let it do its thing. It'll come up to temperature, vent everything. Once it's vented enough and up to pressure, it'll start the timer. Even if you don't leave it on exhaust and then flip it over like you're supposed to. The computer will take care of that. Then, once it's done, it'll turn off. It'll. I don't exhaust it. I just let it set until it cools off. And we have two of these electric canners. So, while this one's cooling off, this one will get started. 
So we pulled a bunch of the meat and bones out on this cookie sheet. So in order to turn this into dog treats or cat treats or whatever, take out all the bones and then you take what's left and pop it in the freezer for 15, 20 minutes until all the, uh, or until the outside freezes. And you want a relatively thin sheet when you do that. Then you can take the, uh, and put it in a Ziploc bag to finish freezing it all the way through. Then keep like a little quart jar or something in the refrigerator. Whenever that jar gets empty of treats, take it out of the freezer. Take what's in the freezer in that gallon Ziploc bag. Throw it in that quart jar in the refrigerator and then it'll fall out and you can give it to the critter the cats and dogs as treats you want to make sure you get out all the bones because cooked bones are really bad for animals cooked bird bones all cooked bones are but especially cooked bird bones so it's important when you're doing jobs like this to do as much multitasking as you can with the different appliances get the tools working for you so while the canner is heating up and canning the first batch, we're getting the second batch ready to be canned. While we also have what we're making into treats, at the first batch in the freezer. So the freezer's doing its job, the canner's doing its job, while we process and fill out more jars. That saves a lot of time when you're doing a big job like this. And uh, let's say you don't buy a turkey or don't have Thanksgiving at your house. If you bring a big stock pot with you, Pretty much anybody that you go to their house for Thanksgiving and you say, hey, can I, once you're done carving all the meat off of there you want to, for leftovers tomorrow, can I have the leftover turkey bones and stuff? Pretty much everybody's going to be like, that might be a little weird, but I'll give it to you. And then you'd be like, hey, I'm making turkey broth out of it. They'll still be like, that's weird, but sure, take it. So I didn't mean to make that sound like you need to be in a hurry. What I'm trying to get at is uh, let the tools do most of the work for you. So you want the canner and the freezer to be maximizing what they're capable of so that you're not doing as much work. You want tools to work for you. You want this to be uh, a fun thing. Relax, take time, spend time with your spouse and, and or your kids. Make this part of your holiday celebration. And part of the holidays is taking care of the turkey broth. And then also, you're putting away uh, jars for the future, food for the future, in case you get snowed in or somebody's sick and they just need some turkey broth to drink because uh, they're too sick to really eat. A lot of vitamin and nutrients and stuff in here to help you get better. Uh, also, all the collagen that's in here will help uh, with muscle injuries and really conductive tissue injuries, really help with that, like arthritis and uh, my torn rotator cuff to help with that. Also, you can take and make easily make chicken soup out of this uh, with a jar of chicken. Uh, you can do that with chicken stock or turkey stock, but you make some soup out of it, take that, and you can use a jar of chicken or a jar of turkey you made, or this guy you, you grab off the shelf, and have a great meal with uh, pretty much no prep work. Turkey. Yeah, Sarah just grabbed it. Uh, there's a jar of turkey from last year that we did this with. Uh, we didn't need to save the turkey meat this year because we got a bunch of this and we'll probably save some from Christmas. But uh, you get the idea. Don't make uh, homesteading and cooking and preparedness a chore. Make it a uh, part of your life and something you can enjoy and something you spend time with your uh, wife and kids doing because uh, we're storing food for the apocalypse. And so that's the kids aren't going to be there. We're like, what? Whatever. Leave us alone. But if you're like, Hey, me and your mom are going to be uh, doing this cool thing. You might be able to get the kids a little bit more involved. And ex you can get them really involved with uh, when they eat the this, reminding them where it came from. Be like, hey, you remember all that fun we had last Thanksgiving? When, like, hey, Thomas, you remember all that fun you had last Thanksgiving with my dad playing with the magnets at the kitchen table? Well, this turkey broth that you're eating as part of this soup came from that same day and he'll get a look fondly back upon what uh him playing with the magnets with my dad and uh you just heard probably heard that that's the uh nesco almost up to temp 
So we ended up with, and it's still hot, but eight of these pint jars, quart jars, I'm sorry, eight of these quart jars. Um, we have behind me in the canner three quart jars finishing up, and then we got a whole gallon, most of a gallon bag full of uh, the meat left over from making the broth. This is, there's most of the nutrition stuff has been cooked out of here and is in the broth, but they make great dog and cat treats. They're still more nutritious than the stuff you buy at the pet section of Walmart. But uh, anyway, if you have any, want to know more about canning or anything like that while this thing's heating up and making all of its noises, if you, if you want to know any more, uh, I'm going to create a playlist. It'll be in the end card. Uh, just click on it. It'll be a short little one minute video on how we do canning with the electric canners. And then I have a three part video. Each part is like 40 minutes long. That goes into every detail you want to know about canning and fermenting foods. It's like an intro into it uh, that I made for my preparedness group. Uh, I made it while teaching the class to them. And uh, all this canning and stuff and here, this one's really going. Look at this thing. I don't know how well that shows up on the camera. And this one. Oh, here we go. This one's got some like lava lamp action going on there. But uh, we need to start doing more of this around our house, and I encourage everybody else start learning how to do more of this kind of stuff and taking all the leftovers of the food and preserving them and stuff and making compost and stuff like that and making use of all this stuff instead of uh, wasting it because uh, as Westerners we're really bad at wasting stuff and uh, I hope it never happens but like during the Great Depression and other times in people's in the history of the United States, and even worse in other history, uh, I, there's a great Bible story about a woman who uh, was upset. She, her and her friend killed and ate her child because they were starving, and then she was upset because she couldn't find and eat her child, or her friend's child. Uh, she wasn't upset that she killed her child, she was more upset that she couldn't eat her friend's child, because that's how starving and crazy she was. I hope we never get to that point and anybody ever again but if we ever do get to a point where we have any sort of food shortages or unavailabilities like COVID like we did during COVID if that any of that stuff ever happens again we'll be really grateful that we have this and the other stuff this cabinet behind me and the stuff on the other side of the wall and all the other food that we've put away so I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Like I said, if you want to know more about this, oh, I'm also going to throw in that playlist, uh, how to put food into buckets. All kinds of food storage is going to go into that playlist. So if you want to check it out, I really encourage you to. Uh, basically, I cover the basics of all kinds of food storage in there. So thank you for watching this, and remember, we, his people, will start rebuilding.